Robin Lightwalker. I'm an artist. Um, I paint stuff, mostly people, sometimes not people, but mostly people. Uh, usually I paint them with their clothes off, but today we're going to do a special thing and have clothes on um, for the sake of YouTube. <laughs> so here's Sasha, our model. She's lovely. Um, got her set up on a nice little couch with a nice fancy dress and yeah, we're going to paint her. And I'm just going to be bringing some colors out and deciding which ones I like. Enjoy! I'm not even sure if I'm going to be using black, but I'm going to put it on there in case I want to. Um, so I'm going to start sketching her out now. Um, I've already kind of done a little sketch of her on paper here. Uh, just to get like the composition right to see where she is on the page. So right now I'm just going to, I don't know, start some sketchy lines. The trick is to kind of do it as light as possible in case you mess up and you want to change where your lines are. So that's the top of her head, top of her hair really. And then you can put her face in. It's just a big oval. Sasha's got kind of a long face. And she's got a rounded out chin. Um, and she's got this nice curly hair, which is going to be really fun to paint. Uh, so when you're drawing, it's like 80% looking at the model and 20% putting stuff on a canvas or a page. I'm actually working on a wood panel right now that I've primed with like a light purple, just house paint, just cause it was laying around. I'm not really picky about materials. I kind of just use whatever I use and hope that it works and it usually does. I'm just getting the top of her dress right now. We picked this dress out because it went off the shoulder, and I like shoulders. The clavicle is one of my favorite things to draw. And that's the part right here. For any of you who don't know anatomy. Yeah, I think we're gonna stop there maybe, and move back into the face. I kind of just want to get like a, a hint of each feature. You don't want to spend too long in the sketch because then that takes away from painting time. And usually you only have your model for like a little bit. Um, now I tend to draw and paint very quickly compared to other artists, so. You're like, why are you so fast? Just, it's all right if you're not that fast. Because I'm super speedy. Which works for me, but it doesn't work for everyone. Some people will take like weeks and weeks on a piece when I'll take like three hours. It's mostly because I've done so many art battles and life drawing where you only have like 30 seconds to get a whole pose in. Trying to get basically the outline of her uh, eye socket right now. So I start with that before you put the eyes in, because then you know kind of where the eyes go in the skull. You just have to kind of visualize what the skull looks like underneath the skin. It sounds kind of morbid, but it's kind of fun.
And you always want to like step back a bit or just lean back and take in the whole piece before you kind of get married to certain lines. Because once you start painting, it's harder to erase the lines that you have. So this is the part where you are fine to mess up on. It's easy to go back. Try to find where her nose is. So her face is actually slightly tilted, so I want to keep that in mind when I'm putting the nose down, because the nose will kind of indicate what way her face is pointing. So if her face was pointing straight on, you'd put it in the center of the face, but her nose is slightly off to the side, so I want to keep that in mind. I'm going to make it go slightly beneath this line here. Yeah, that looks about right. So now I want to measure how far from the bottom of the nose the mouth comes. So that's going to be like the top of the mouth there. And then this is the middle of the mouth, and then the bottom of the bottom lip. And her lip goes down a little bit, and the edges of her mouth are just slightly off from where her nose is. So if you drew a line here, you could put it right there, and another one right there. And that's pretty much all you need to start painting. If you want, you can block in the shadows too. So there's a shadow there, there's a shadow on her eye, shadow under her eye, shadow on both sides of her eye here. And then there's a pretty deep shadow where her chin is. Um, and her top lip is all in shadow as well. You want to make sure to get that in the painting. Make sure that's darker than the bottom lip. So the bottom lip catches all the light, but the top lip kind of comes out, so it's more shadow. Um, yeah. And then there's a nice highlight here that I don't want to miss. There's a highlight here. And then there's actually a big highlight underneath her chin. There's a fancy word for it. I think it's like cast shadow or something like that. I only went to art school for like one semester. The rest of it I just kind of learned by doing. So I don't know all the terms, but I kind of know how to use them. If that makes any sense. <laughs> I'm gonna start painting. So I'm kind of doing a loose style today because I like to be loose because I think it's more fun that way. And we've only got a couple of hours, so I want to get as much done as possible in this little time and make it look cool. So I'm just gonna block in some of the tones on her face first. You can just use kind of loose strokes. Uh, it's not completely opaque, so you're going to see the co color of uh, canvas, whatever background color you got. Different paints have different qualities. Um, right now, this is like a a medium body acrylic, so body is just like how much weight it has. 
so how much texture it has when it dries. If you use house paint, it doesn't have much weight at all. It's just kind of thin. It goes on smooth. And then oil paint has like a really thick texture. So it's gonna be pretty heavy. Right now I'm just doing the parts that are um, in the light and I'm kind of avoiding the places that are in shadow. And the trick is not to make every single brushstroke perfect because if you try to make every brushstroke perfect, you're going to be here for your whole life. <laughs> and it's still never going to be perfect. So I consider myself an imperfectionist because I like the imperfections. I think it's what makes people beautiful and I think it's what makes art beautiful. Yeah, I think that's a nice, nice start. You can already kind of see the contours of her face now. Um, so the next step is to block in the shadows. So I'm gonna pick a shadow color, and I think I'm gonna pick this dark purple here. So I like purple, and I know Sasha likes purple. And it'll go with her nice blue dress. And obviously, these are not realistic skin tones, if you've noticed. People don't have bright purple faces. Um, but that's fine, because we're not trying to go for high realism. We're trying to go for a more stylized, kind of more abstract kind of portrait which can be super fun. If you're not having fun, well, why the hell are you doing art? To make money? That's hilarious. So there's this big shadow underneath her neck, which is kind of nice, and I like it. I'm trying to get that in there. Mm -hmm. And there's another big shadow underneath her nose. Some nice shadows, which are my favorite shadows, right underneath the eyebrow. And that kind of give the eye some nice definition. And I'm just kind of using a medium brush for all this, just because um, just a nice size for doing the loose kind of starting of the painting because you can still kind of get some details, but they're, they're a bit messier, but that's kind of what I'm going for. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so I kind of let that dry. I'm going to come back and put some of that warm, fleshy tone into her shoulder here. Uh, if you notice, I just uh, dropped my... Oh, there's a fly. He's going to help us paint. I hope he doesn't get stuck in the paint and die. That happens a lot. Bugs really kind of love paint for some reason. <laughs> so I'm like constantly finding dead bugs in my paint or on my paintings. Kind of awkward. Okay, so we've got most of this skin tone down. So now I'm going to move on to the hair and we're going to get kind of crazy with the hair. Because it's curly and fun. You can do that. So I'm going to use a palette knife. Maybe not this one. Maybe this one. Yeah. I'm going to do just some colors. It's going to be fun. Palette knife strokes are some of my favorite strokes because they're like, it's almost impossible to make them look clean. <laughs> And you still kind of want to pay attention to the hair and like where the light is. So you can do like a lighter color up here and a darker color below. Right now I'm using blues for some reason. Uh, her hair is obviously not blue, but I'm having fun. That's all that matters. You've got a little bit of time with acrylic to mix the colors in, not too much. You've got more time if it's thicker. So if you have a big glob of acrylic, it's going to dry a lot slower than if you just put on a thin layer with a brush. So you can mix these two colors in really nicely. Gives you some cool effects. I might even bring some of this dark purple in because it looks really nice with the turquoise blue. With a palette knife, you can get some fun, messy strokes, but you can also get a nice, clean line, as you can see there, if you know how to use it properly. And there's like different shapes of palette knives. There's circles, there's squares, there's triangles. And they all do kind of different, fun things. Some nice fun hair right there, and that took what, like five minutes? It doesn't take long at all. If you're willing to get messy and just let loose a little bit, painting doesn't have to be like super intimidating and scary, it can just be loose and fun. 
trying to open this palette. It's kind of hard sometimes because it's got so much paint layered onto it. Ugh, there we go. So these are water mixable oils. They dry really slow, so I can kind of keep them on the palette and they're still kind of wet. Um, and if you kind of leave them out to dry a little bit, but not completely, they just gain more and more body and more and more texture. So that can be fun too. So it's a win-win. Put some paint down so I have some room for my other palette. So I'm going to bring a little bit more realistic skin tones into our face here. Hmm. Just deciding what brush to use. I think I want hmm. this one. This one's a nice squared off brush. Okay. I think we're going to want some little white highlights here just for where the light is strongest. So that's going to be up here. And on the nose here. And on the top of the nose, there's like a little dot. Line and right underneath the eye, there's another little white highlight. So, with this style, less is more. Does that make sense? So, like, you want to get every single color right, sure, but it's gonna take too long. So, just try to get as much done. Um, with as little brush strokes as possible. And that's going to be better for everyone. I'm like constantly trying to find a good balance between realism and abstract because I love them both, but I love them the most when they kind of come together. That's a little bit too red, so I'm going to add some more yellow in there. And it's a bit too bright, so if it's bright, you can add a little bit of blue to dull it out. A little bit more. to lighten it up. There we go. It's fairly good. So now I'm going to kind of go over this flesh tone here with oils and kind of add a little bit more texture because the oils have a nice texture. Still need more yellow. I like to kind of paint in circles, like there's a circular pattern on the forehead, and then there's circulars around the eyes, and circles around the cheeks, and circles around the nose. You can kind of see which way the brush strokes go, and it's usually in a circle. Because it's kind of easy for your mind to break down things into simpler shapes. Obviously, a face is very complex, but if you break it down, it's just really a bunch of geometric shapes that are a little bit off from the normal color or the normal shape. And 
And Sasha's got a very nice warm skin tone and it's contrasting really well with the blue that I put in the hair. So I'm kind of happy with how this is turning out so far. When you're working with oils, you can also use a bit of linseed oil or something to like uh, not water it down because it's oil, but um, kind of thin it out. But I kind of like to just work um, with just the oils themselves because I like the texture of it, but it can be hard to mix the oils that way. It's all dependent on what kind of texture you're going for. Yeah, it's nice. Now I'm going to add a little bit more white to this color. Right now I'm trying to make her uh, look more three-dimensional. Uh, the way you do that is by layering more and more highlights and shadows in different tones of each. So if you look really closely you can see that underneath her eyebrow there there's like a darker spot so above it it's going to be lighter to kind of bring that out. See and that just makes it look more 3D. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just put the paint on. It'll do some magic on its own. Gonna take it further and add even more white. And just keep building it. You can kind of do the same thing even with uh, like a drawing. If you get some toned paper, or you can even just paint the paper a certain color. Um, you can build onto it with white pencil crayons and charcoal for the shadows. There's so many ways to, to capture a face. You know, you don't have to be an oil painter. You can do the same thing with just acrylic. And you can buy it at the dollar store if you want. It just... Uh, it doesn't blend quite as nicely but you can still get a nice effect. Okay, I think I'm going to do one more addition of white to the same color just to bring the face out just a little bit more. And then I'll move on to a different part. I kind of want to be really loose with this one 
because this is the one you're really going to see. So just sparsely add it wherever you want, but keeping with the pattern of what's on her face. Now I kind of want to add a little bit of red to the same color for her lip because it's a little bit more red than the rest of her face. If she was wearing makeup I would just smear the red on but I told her not to wear any makeup so. Just a subtle color difference. Yeah, I think that's nice. And now I'll add a little bit of white to that so that I can give the lips some more definition. Right at the bottom there. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to step back and kind of take a look at what I have here and see what I want to add. Well, I definitely want to add a gesture of this dress that she's got on. But I kind of want it to be very loose. So I'm going to take a huge brush like this. And I think I'm going to take the colors that I have in her hair. Just use them. I'm going to start with the shadows for this one. There's a shadow under here. And there's a shadow in the fold here. Shadow right there, and there's a shadow on the side. And there's like little hints of shadows all over. And there's one here from the hair that's being cast. And I'm just going to take this whole brush and just go to town with it. Kind of blending in some of the shadows and then leaving some of them as they are. And the edges are going to be kind of loose and streaky, and that's fine. Come back in and put some dark shadow underneath here, just to bring that back out. And maybe even a little bit of purple underneath there, because it's very, very dark. There. And that kind of brings the piece together. I've got a nice composition going on here. Very central, but it's got like a swoop. Swoop to cool. Alright. I think I want to play with the shadows in her face a bit more. Now that I've added the highlights, the shadows look too loose. See, it's like a very hard thing to find the mix between too loose and not loose enough. <laughs> Spent my whole life trying to find it. I'm going to add a bit of blue to this purple. Maybe a little bit of white. Too much white. Okay. More purple. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, this red to dull it out. 
And yeah, I think we have a nice color. So this is a very dark color that I'm adding here. And it's going to kind of frame the shadow of the face. I'm going to put it under here. And this is only going to go in like the darkest spots. So underneath the lip and the chin, underneath the nose. And I'm going to give some definition to her neck here, because if you look very closely, you can see there is definition there, even though it's being covered mostly by shadow. I think I'm going to bring it into here, right underneath the hair. Maybe a little bit underneath her neck here. And then I'm going to bring it into her eyes. Really make them pop out again. Go back and take that color that I used on the face and I'm going to mix it into the purple below her neck here for that highlight that's underneath her chin. Looks like she's glowing now, which is cool. Yeah. So. Now I'm just going to take a look and see how I feel about it so far and see what I need to add. And I think I want to add a bit of gold since I have it. And I think the gold is just going to come around her head and maybe even a little bit in her hair. She's got these nice gold highlights. This is like a metallic gold paint. So it'll shimmer in the light. I'm just kind of adding it where I want to. But I'm trying to keep with the theme of what's actually going on. I think I want it to be all around her head, too. This has the added bonus of getting rid of any pencil lines. 
that are still on the, on the page. And there's some streaks of other colors in the gold, and that's that's pretty cool. I like that. It's very subtle. I definitely need more gold. Palette knives are a great way to waste paint because <laughs> you get so much on without realizing how much you're putting in. Okay, so that's looking nice. I'm liking this a lot. But I think the skin tone could still use a little bit more definition. So I'm just going to keep plugging away at that for a little bit until I get it right. And I think I'm going to use a smaller brush so I can get some of these fine details around the eye, around the nose. Always try not to rest your hand on the canvas if you have wet paint there, because <laughs> that can be a disaster. So you can either rest your arm on a chair like this, or you can just loosey-goosey it. And some people have like a bar that they bring down and they rest it on it, but I'm just not that fancy. I'm feeling like the nose needs the most work. I don't think it's very defined yet. So I'm just going to take a good look at it and see where the shadows are and where the mid-tones are and where the highlights are. The shadows should actually come down a little bit. And then her nose has like this rounded part at the top that you want to pay attention to. So you can get it right. And the shadow comes all the way up here. And this is making some cool shapes with the shadows. <clears throat> 
But I kind of want to blend them a little bit more. I find one of the hardest parts of being an artist is knowing when to stop. Because this could have been done after three paint strokes, it could have been done after ten, or I could work on this for the rest of my life. Um, so you kind of have to find a happy medium. And sometimes I like to smudge with my hand. Have to make sure to wash your hands after. I hear oils aren't the best for your skin. But the things we do for our art. So that eye is looking nice, but I think the other one still needs a bit more work. I kind of want a bigger brush. This one. So I think I've got too much shadow on this eye still. Bring this up a bit. At this point, I'm just being very nitpicky. But it's fine to be a little bit nitpicky. If you see here, I've kind of messed up on the lip and I've made this part of the lip go up uh, quite a bit higher than the other side, so I'm just going to smoothen that out. And now it looks less like she's smirking. highlights the more I look at her face. So I want to bring some white into the top of her eye here. And a little bit under here. And a little bit under here. I think I want to blend the shadow a little bit.
so there's just a couple little details that I still want to do. Um, if you look closely, you can see how um, her hair kind of curls into her face a little bit more than what I have here. So I want to try to capture that. So I'll do that with some blues on a palette knife. And I try to, I want to get the curls not perfect, but to look nice. Just all these tiny little details that make up a face. And you have to know which ones are important and which ones you can leave out. the opposite problem on the other side where the hair shouldn't be in front of the face but it is so I'm just going to fix that with a little bit of the skin tone color so I'm just really paying attention to where her face ends just the general shape of it and my acrylic paint is dry now, so it's very easy to paint over top of. And I think I want to bring this color into the bottom of the chin still. And a little bit underneath her neck here. I think that's looking nice. Maybe a little bit more. And I think we could stand to go one more highlight on her face. And then bringing more yellow into the tone, as well as a little bit of white. To try to warm it up a little bit. more on her clavicle and her neck. And there's a nice little line that I've missed here. It goes right across like that. Yeah, it's looking better. I keep saying one more highlight. I'm usually lying. It's hard to know when to stop.
And I think I want to add a little bit more white to the blue here. More white. Some white at all. Just to give the dress and the hair a little bit more definition. Do this with the palette knife. Kind of mixing it in with the blue that's already there. It's kind of like a blue green. Bring the same color into her hair a little bit. Not that much. Just very small highlights. To indicate how shiny her hair is. I'm going to call that done. So yeah, we, uh, we did a painting. It was fun. Yeah, it's loose. It's messy. It's fun. It's super colorful. We got some gold in there. Good stuff. <laughs>